Hey, my name's Ralph, I'm with Flex Film, and I've got a really good video for you today. I I'm gonna change the way you think about something, something that you do every day. And what this video is gonna be about is visible light transmission. And um, I have opinions about visible light transmission. Other people have opinions about it. You'll hear them arguing about it. There seems to be no definite answer here on what's right, what's wrong, how much does a, feeder, uh, a film meter. I'm gonna clear some things up for you. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna show you some things that are gonna blow your mind. And then, then we're going to reverse engineer what you see and try to make some sense out of it. But right here, what I have in my hand is a uh, visible light transmission meter. This is by Laser Labs. It's a very uh, inexpensive one. Most law enforcement carry this meter. So this is what we're going to use. And I would suggest that, you know, uh, we need to consider going by what this one says to stay out of trouble with the law. It, 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 that seems to be what the most law enforcement officers are carrying around. But first of all, behind me is a truck. It's a GMC. 2003 and there's no tin on this glass from aftermarket but I want to show you by placing a white piece of paper behind it you can see that there's tint clearly on this glass because this is white and this is actually a um, uh, darker color uh, but what I want to do let's just figure out how wh what this is going to meter with our laser labs meter it's going to meter at 73% I'm going to move it around a little bit and I'm actually going to see, okay, it's, it's 73%. Let me bring the camera over here and let you see what it says. 73%. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a piece of film and we're going to meter the film and I want to see what it meters that we're going to install on this glass. Here's some of our OmniFlex 35. This meter is not really designed to meter film, but you can do it. It's really designed to meter film and glass when it's together. But um, I'm going to stick this in here and see what happens. I'm going to play around with it. Let me get a little closer to the camera so you can see it. See, see that reading right there? 35%. Okay, I want to show you a quick formula to determine what the visible light transmission should be based on our laser lab meter readings on the film and the glass. You've got the glass is going to be 73% according to the laser lab's meter. You've got the uh, film, that's going to be 34%. Okay, you've got to take 34% of 73% is going to equal what the visible light transmission should be. By doing a simple math equation, 0.73 and 0.34, you just multiply those together. I'll do this real quick. 4 times 3 is 12, carry the 1. 4 times 7 is 28, 29. 8 times 3 is 9, 8 times 21, 21. 2, 18, 4, 2. Your net VLT is going to equal around 24%. Actually, 24.82%. Simple math. But I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Okay, I'm going to take our sample piece of film that we just metered in our glass and I'm going to tint this real quick and then we're going to put the meter on it and see what it reads. Not trying to win a competition here, I'm just trying to get the film on the glass so we can get a quick reading. 
Make sure it's a smooth cut here. Okay. I want to bring this around and show you in real time what you see. 28%. Okay, this is uh, starting to get interesting. Uh, here we have a laser labs meter. I've, I've used the same meter. Uh, we're getting uh, readings on the meter. I'm, I'm taking it to the board. I'm doing mathematical equations and things aren't adding up. Uh, if you want to come deeper into the wormhole, I got another experiment to show you. I'm not going to tell you exactly what's going on yet. I'm going to save the best for last. But um, let, me, let, me, let me get you to wrap your mind around this. These uh, Glass slides come with this laser labs meter, and these have been predetermined what VLTs that they're supposed to be from the laser labs company. I'm holding this one right here that says it's supposed to be, this is supposed to be 28% on this meter. And this one here says it's supposed to be 80% on this meter. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to see how accurate this meter is according to laser labs own specifications. Let's see if I can... Hold it up here. I think you can read that. It's 29%. Now, according to Laser Labs, this is supposed to meter 28%. There's an indication that this meter might be off of percentage. But if I use the same meter, the number still should work out. Let me just show you this slide here. This one's supposed to be 80% according to Laser Labs. Again, I'm going to stick it in there. See what we get. Okay, we're accurate here on this one. It's 80%. Laser Labs says it's supposed to be 80%. And one more thing I want to show you is this random piece of film I have laying here. I'm about to trim it up a little bit. I have no idea what this piece of film is. I just picked it up off the floor a minute ago. Whatever it is, it's metered at 22%. 22%, okay. This meter right here is by e EDTM. This is a $630 beam splitter. You've got three readings, UV, visible, and infrared. What we're really worried about is visible light. Don't worry about the other two readings at the moment. I want you to see, now this meter right here metered, metered the film at 22. Let's see what this meter meters it at. This one says it's 23 or 24%, depends on how I bend it. You see the fluctuation there? Okay, it, it isn't visible light transmission supposed to be the same for everybody? This meter says it's one reading, and, and this meter says it's another reading. It's off two or three points. Remember this slide right here? This one read at 80 on my laser labs meter. Let's see what this one meters at. 75%. There's a 5% difference between this meter and this meter. This one right here metered at 29. Laser Lab says it's supposed to meter at 28. Don't know what that's, what that's about. But let me see what this meter says. This one's 30. This one was 29. This one says 30. Well, there's definitely something going on here. And, uh, I'm going to show you what it is right now. Okay, I have the mystery. I've written it down on a piece of paper. This is our culprit right here. Refractive index. 
also known as the index of refraction. Let me explain. First, I want to read a simple definition. A number indicating the speed of light in a given medium as the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum in air to that in the given medium. Let me explain briefly what this means. There's a value assigned to the speed of light and that value is a one when light travels through a vacuum right here. For example, I wrote down some other values that I got that um, I think are relevant to understanding what's going on here. The light travels through water at 1.333 times faster than it does in a vacuum. A vacuum is a one. That's where light travels, that's, that's the constant. Uh, it's interesting to me that if light travels really fast through a diamond, 2.42 times faster. And then you've got air, which is almost the same as a vacuum, but just a little bit more. But here's something I found really interesting, glass. There's different types of glass. We have uh, laminated glass in cars now. We have tempered glass and uh, thicknesses are, are different now. So you've got a lot of different stuff going on in these cars that change the value in which how fast light travels. I found a range of that value fluctuating between 1.49 to 1.62. Let me, let me tell you what all this means. You've got two companies that I, I randomly selected. There are other meters that I can prove this theory with. These meters are designed to measure visible light transmission. They do a great job. But somebody at Laser Labs and somebody at EDTM decided we have to plug in a formula like we have to guess at what car glass does. And that's why this meter is going to meter different than this one because the guys at Laser Labs thought we're going to plug in a formula probably somewhere between 1.49 and 1.62 and that's what we're going to use because we think that fits most cars. These people here may have said, yeah, we're going to use one in this range also, but we're going to use a different one. I'm not really sure what they did or why they did it, but I can tell you what happened because I can prove to you that this meter is going to, going to probably measure the vi visible light transmission like we did figure it out on, 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 the, on the math side, but then they're going to try to figure out the refractive index, and that's the change. That's the variable right there. These people are going to use a different formula than these people, and that's why there's a difference. That's why when we, when we don't consider the refractive index and, and we, we use a simple formula, we meter the glass, we meter the tent, we do the math, Without considering the refractive index of the medium, see, we pull the release liner off the tent after we measured it. We put the tent on the glass. The glass, you know, is, is actually changing the way the light travels. There's the variable of three to four percent usually in a car. Thought I'd like to shed some light on this. Maybe there's no mystery to you now. Why you'll never put your finger on visible light transmission 100 percent. Back to my original statement. If you think that law enforcement is, is carrying this meter, if you really want to play it safe and not get into all this crazy stuff and all this math, take a car, test a sample of tent, put it on the meter, whatever it says right here, go buy it. That's my advice. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope I've shed some light on the visible light transmission mystery. Thank you. Let's go there.